I think it'll be very interesting to hear from you, Dob, that, um, how you experience the relationship between Arabs and Jews uh, in those early days. I mean, that would, the, the thing has changed completely. Even mm. I, even I have memories of it, which are much later than yours. Of course. But um, the, the, this area on Shabbat used to be filled with Arabs coming for coffee with their uh, colleagues who lived here, the colleagues at work. Yeah. And they used to come, the women in Palestinian dress, the men with the kafir, and they bring their children, even the grandparents came. Um, but all that was changed by Yasser Arafat. Well, I can't answer so much about this particular no, area. No, no. You know, I I was born in London in 1926, mm. and it's a long story. How, how, but I was brought here in 1928, mm. and I grew up in Romerma. Yes, in the, my grandfather's, my paternal grandfather's home. Yeah. Romerma is actually where the city was surrendered to the British yeah. in 1917, mm. and uh, it's. The Romema bordered on the Arab lift, uh, the village of Lifta. Mm -hmm. And li there were two, actually, Lifta was composed of upper and lower. Yes. And in the, tr the troubles of August 1929, Arabs from lower Lifta wanted to march on the Jews of Romema. And the Arabs of upper Lifta stood in their path and warned them in no one, in, in no uncertain terms, only over our bodies. Hmm. Such were the relations yes. between the Jews and yes. Arabs then. I mean, admittedly, these were the exceptions. Yeah. Even in Hebron there were one or two exceptions. Yeah. But by and large, whenever, if, if there wasn't any incitement, hmm. and I must say that some of the incitement was caused by the British at the time, egging the uh, Mufti on. But other than that, the relations generally were quite good. Yes. I remember after the 67 war, just after it, meeting down in one of the valleys here, I think it was the Kidron Valley, um, uh, uh, saw a little shop selling old pieces of pottery and coins and so on. Mm -hmm. And to my great surprise, the, two, the, the partners were one uh, Arab uh, and one Jew. And I said to him, I thought you were all loggerheads. And he said, no, we get on very well together. And the, but of course, as I said, that, that was all ended with uh, the first intifada. Yes, very much so. And the first Intifada, which broke out in 19, I think, 1987, was yes, it? Yes, it was quite late, yeah. Well, some people, some people maintain that uh, it was uh, spontaneous because of a traffic accident, <laughs> which uh, a truck driver lost control of, of his truck and uh, a few Arabs killed. I'm just wondering because whether that is the case because nine, uh, 1987 was the 800th anniversary of the Battle of the Horns of Chitin, ah. where Saladin defeated the Crusaders. Hmm. I'm just wondering whether this was really spontaneous or whether it was Some, deliberate. Uh, deliberate, yes. yes. Well, I think we have a lot to blame Yasser Arafat for. Oh, yes. Because um, I was very surprised sometimes the amount um, of um, genuine interaction between Jews and Arabs. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there were always hotheads, you know, that, uh, that could cause trouble. Yes. But it's interesting, you know, I've got here some facts here. I've got yes. some quotes. Yeah. 
And uh, I'm bringing it up because, you know, I served in the British Army. Yes. I was a British Middle East enlistment. Yes. I served from 1942 to 1947. Yes. There were about 30,000 Jewish volunteers from what was then Palestine serving yes. in the British Army yes. and a few hundred Arabs. Yes. And at a certain point in time, the British brass permitted the volunteers from Palestine to wear a shoulder tag saying Palestine. Yeah. And the Jewish volunteers, by and large, went and got it, mm. not the Arabs. Yeah. They said, we are not Palestinians, we yeah. are Arabs. Yeah. And here I've got some very interesting quotes. For instance, there's no such country as Palestine. Palestine is a term the Zionists invented. Our country was for centuries part of Syria. Palestine is alien to us. It is the Zionists who invented it. And this is a quote by Aouni Bey Abdul Hadi, a local Arab uh, leader, hmm. to the British Peel Commission of 1937. Hmm. Another one, there is no such thing as Palestine in history. Absolutely not. That's Professor Philip Hitti, an Arab historian, to the Anglo-American Committee of Inquiry in 1946. Hmm. And this one, it is common knowledge that Palestine is nothing but southern Syria. That's Ahmed Shukeri. He was the, uh, actually, the, the uh, found, founder of the uh, PLO. He was addressing the UN Security Council in 1956. <laughs> I've got a few others, but this, this really shows it. And well, even I have an experience in Egypt when... Um, I asked uh, 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 somebody, you know, in the open market, um, I, I did, we were buying something rather, and I said, uh, uh, where were you from? He said, I'm from Palestine. Ah, I said, you're a Palestinian Arab. And he blew up and said, but I am not a Palestinian Arab. I am an Arab. So I quietened down and said no more. But that, but later speaking, you know, uh, with Mr. Begin, um, he said, "Well, I always called myself a Palestinian Jew." He said, "But he said the Arabs would never call themselves Palestinians." Yeah, and Gold, Arabs. Golda Meir traveled said, uh, traveled on a Palestinian passport. <laughs> yes, I mean, I just find it very amazing that all of a sudden they are Palestinians and Palestine is very, very important and all the rest of it. But I'd like to add something, another, yes. a, another little note. Yeah. Some years back I got into talking with an Orthodox Jew on the edge yeah. of Me'a Sharim yeah. and I told him that, uh, you know, the, uh, the Muslims, they don't worship the same God as we do. Hmm. And he said, oh, that's funny, because really, I, a few weeks ago, I was talking to an Arab acquaintance, and I said to him, why are we always fighting? After all, don't we have the same God? And the Muslim was really furious. Yeah. And people don't seem to realize that the Allah of Islam is not the God of the Bible. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, I understand that originally it was the moon god. Oh, yes. And that he had three daughters. And the original thing was the crescent moon with three stars. Where the other two got lost, I don't know, uh, over the years. They, mu they must have married some Jews. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is interesting that... Um, Allah is probably from uh, the, uh, the uh, moon god because it is quite interesting that when supposedly, allegedly, um, Gabriel um, spoke to um, Muhammad, Muhammad uh, he said to him, you are to go to the, um, uh, to the, to the Kaaba stone and you are to, to destroy all the idols, including the one that is named with my name, Allah. Hmm. So I always felt that the, there's something extraordinary about the beginning of Islam. And if I'm not mistaken, the name of the moon god is Sin. Yeah. I thought it was Alila. 
But I, again, Maybe I'm not absolutely that. certain about that, but I remember... I know that the the, the Muezzin's proclamation is always, La Allah illa Allah, Muhammad yeah. Rasulillah. Yeah. And the other thing that I always found very interesting, this is, goes back quite a few years for me, um, when I lived in Egypt, um, the two old missionaries who had such an effect upon me, especially in, uh, to do with intercession and prayer, um, one of them was a very uh, real classical Arabic, Arabic scholar. And whenever I... Um, used the name, for instance, like Alhamdulillah, or one of those things, she would say, you must not say that, not as a believer. And I said, why not? Doesn't it mean God? And she said, no, she said. And to this day, I still am sorry that I have never remembered the, the Hebrew uh, name that she gave me. She said, always call God by this name. I wonder whether it was Eloha. It may have been, but she said Allah is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, In fact, and Jacob. It's Allah of Islam. Yes. You have to make that point because yes. although Christian Arabs hmm. sometimes do use the term Allah. Yes, of course. Although they do have two other terms, uh, El Rab, the yes. the Great One, or El Sayed, the Lord. Yes. Well, I know that Auntie uh, Kathleen, she had uh, um, in Arabic a name, she said, you, this is the name you must use mm -hmm. when, when with the Arab Christians, uh, not the other. And uh, I always remembered that, but I forgot it. I, by the way, I make a very clear distinction between Arab Christians and Christian Arabs. Yes. You know, yeah. The first are nominal. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. And uh, that reminds me, relations between Jewish and Arab believers in the Messiah, yeah. they seem to, they differ according to area, don't yeah. they? Yes, I think Because so. in the north, in Haifa and in Galilee, yeah. you have wonderful relations between Jewish and Arab believers yes, in absolutely. the Messiah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I wonder why it didn't why it's not the same here. It's, I mean, you have a few. Yes, there were some Arab um, believing communities within the city walls. Yes, and they they don't mind any messianic coming in and worshiping with them. Yes, but they they are. They, I mean, they're true believers. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes.